Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey. 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 <laughs> hey, so is everybody ready for Jesus' birthday? That's coming up. I got my sparkle Jesus hat on in preparation. Got this at a Latino flea market. It's funny, uh, this is a Jesus hat. A lot of people wear Santa hats at Christmas. And a lot of people get Santa presents during Christmas in the form of snacks. And nobody ever gets Jesus a present. What if he comes back? <laughs> well, Jesus comes back and nobody got him a present. <laughs> Poor Jesus. <laughs> He's probably okay with it though, maybe. Because, you know, he wasn't all that into money or possessions. So it's kind of strange that a lot of people celebrate his birthday by buying a lot of possessions. <laughs> I like to imagine, like, what if Jesus came back during Black Friday and showed up to Best Buy? And he's like, hey, it's me, Jesus, everybody. You might remember me from my biography, the Bible. I don't know if you've read it. I know it's pretty long and it needs better dialogue. But hey, my point, my whole point was that we should love each other and not, we don't need all these shiny TVs. Ah! ah! And that's when Jesus gets tackled because he's standing in the way of sweet ass deals on flat screens. <laughs> it was said that we give each other presents because on the first Christmas, wise men, the three wise men, gave Jesus presents to welcome him to earth. He gave Jesus, they gave Jesus frankincense and myrrh and gold and for such an intelligence flattering title as wise men, they sure gave a baby some real dumb presents. <laughs> I'm no economics major or do I understand what the fuck myrrh is? <laughs> but I do know that giving a baby gold is no wise investment. <laughs> because all babies invest gold in the same place that they invest pretty much anything that you hand to them, their mouths. <laughs> and that's a good thing because your gold is going to get cleaned with a warm coat of baby saliva. Aww. But it's a bad thing because that baby might get sick because there's germs on that gold. And maybe, just maybe, that's what happened to Jesus. That's how he developed his distaste for money. On his first day of life, he got sick because he sucked on some wise man's dirty gold. <laughs> it is good that those wise men did bring a couple of adult appropriate presents because if anybody in this story deserved a special treat, it's Jesus' stepdad, Joseph. Because I don't know what was going on in their relationship. You know, Mary was a virgin, but he was married to her. So somebody was sexually frustrated in that scenario. And it probably didn't help matters that Mary got pregnant with a supreme being's baby. But he was cool about it. And in that part of the world, it's tradition that when uh, a woman gets impregnated by another dude, that you should throw rocks at her until she stops being pregnant <laughs> and also alive. <laughs> so Joseph being cool about it was like a really great Christmas miracle. <laughs> another, another awesome Christmas miracle was the big star in the sky uh, marking where Jesus was born. That's how the wise men found Jesus. And that's a pretty big deal because, as we all know, stars are suns in far off galaxies. And so God either had to move a whole solar system to closer to the Earth or develop a new sun just for one night, which is, either way, is really a big deal uh, in, compared to, you know, our modern day just time balloons to a mailbox. <laughs> And I don't, even, I don't even think that would be a good navigational tool 
if there was a giant star in the sky these days, you know, because we're so close together, our neighborhoods are so close together. Like if you were having, like, sir, if you were having a party, and I was coming to the party, and I was like, I was calling you up, and I was like, oh, I can't find the party. And you were like, dude, just look for the giant star in the sky. And I'm like, well, you know what else is underneath the giant star? The whole fucking neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> And then I type in giant star on my GPS, and it just recalculates. <laughs> A lot of people say the biggest Christmas miracle was the Immaculate Conception. That moment when God impregnated Mary. Somehow, the Bible doesn't really tell all the juicy details of how that went down. So it's been one of my life's great pleasures to imagine all of them. And you can do it too. Anytime you can make up whatever you want to. Nobody can tell you you're wrong. Because they don't know. <laughs> but here's my favorite. I'm going to lay my favorite on you. It goes like this. God's up in planet heaven. Wherever planet heaven is. And God has strategically placed cameras all over earth. So he can watch us all the time. And he's got his monitoring system, and he sees that Mary has gone to sleep. And so God springs to action. He goes to his transport chamber, where he beams himself down to earth, Star Trek style. And then he shoots himself with a shrinking ray gun, honey, I shrunk the kids style. And now God's all tiny. He's super cute. He's like really so tiny that he's able to wiggle up inside Mary's vagina. Undetected while she's asleep and while he's there he jacks off until he comes all over her ovaries <laughs> mary's pregnant virgin status still technically maintained it could have happened that way the bible didn't say that it didn't and you're probably thinking yeah right Tiny semen like that couldn't get a full-grown woman pregnant. <laughs> Folks, we're talking about God's semen here. That can get us all pregnant. They can get girls pregnant. They can get guys pregnant. They can get us mind stand pregnant. Don't question the power of God's semen. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's because I'm from the South and raised with southern values but if you, if you get somebody pregnant and you never even had their permission to have sex with them in the first place isn't that rape i mean i don't want to say that god raped mary but god kind of raped mary a little bit which gotta make sense, cause he God didn't even put that in the Ten Commandments. He made sure he got that "Don't say his name in vain" commandment, but he left out rape. What's the deal with that? Just don't say a goddamn while you're raping. We don't do it on Sunday. <laughs> What if God does that all the time? We don't know what God's doing. He could be shrinking down and getting all in vaginas all the time. <laughs> Any one of us could be Jesus' half-brother and sister. Something to think about. <laughs> also, I think it could help some uh, evangel evangelical Christians with their message. You know, because a lot of people... A lot of them are against abortion, you know, stay with me. Uh, <laughs> you might remem remember one Rick Santorum who ran for president back in 2012. He made the statement that anybody that had been raped shouldn't get an abortion because they should just make the best out of a bad situation. But what if he changed that argument and said, hey, if you got raped, don't abort that rape, baby. It might be a Jesus. That's a stronger argument. I think. I guess I 
guess there's no real way to end this on a strong note. So that's it for me. Bye, everybody.